uh, subject property description. Uh, this is part two. And mostly we will focus on general location, specific location, neighborhood, property description. And today it will be a residential property. And also today we will have a chance to look at the part, of course, uh, of the valuation report from the United Kingdom uh, and see how it differs uh, from, let's say, the description of the property uh, in our Polish uh, valuation reports. So, and as I have already mentioned, the access code today to the exercises is 800-200. Yes, so um, let's come to the description of the property and uh, it is made in terms of the market features. In Polish we say cechy and we can translate it also and quite often it is translated as attributes or characteristics. I think it's a little bit safer to say features and attributes because at some point we talk about market characteristics. And then, you know, not to confuse if we talk about, you know, the market features or market attributes of the property with the market characteristics, okay? But generally speaking, all these three words are used. So the market features that influence uh, its value and buyers and sellers on the basis of the market observation take these market features into consideration while determining the property and now you can see selling, sale, sales price. All the expressions selling price, sale price, sales price we are all correct and you can see this uh, um, I took the definitions from uh, dictionaries and uh, Collins dictionary gives two definitions of a sale price and I think this one is the most let's say dangerous why because in one word you've got two meanings uh, so the first meaning of a sale price is the price at which something sells or is sold at or after its price has been reduced. So this is, you know, uh, not what we mean, cena sprzedaży, right? But as you can see here, number two, the price at which something is sold. But here, sale price, you can see that there are two meanings. So sometimes it may not be clear if you are talking about a reduced price or just the price. And they gave you two examples, like the first one, shopping online, however, may give you the opportunity to find these items at sale price, right? So at a discounted reduced price but the second meaning the sale price of the property is 275,000 pounds yes sales price is quite safe because it means the total amount for which tangible personal property or services are sold so for example closing sales price means that the last sales price of the common stock on the principal market. Yes, so sales price is safe, cena sprzedaży. It is not ambiguous. Ambiguous, it means that it's got, it's a little bit confusing sometimes. And then you can also use selling price. Uh, Britannica Dictionary gives you this definition. It means the price for which something actually sells. And they ask 200 thousand for the house but the eventual selling price was 175,000 oh sorry dollars it's about dollars here right so um just you can use all three expressions but to avoid confusion i think it's better to say sales price or selling price okay and now if you try 
Oh, oh, it's quite small. Is it small to everyone? Somehow, but can you see this? Mm, let me have a look. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, it is really small. Really small. <laughs> I don't know why. Let me. The other one is okay. I mm -hmm. think that maybe it is something when it's it is converting. converting. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me let me do something um, because I've got this presentation in PowerPoint, and if I share my screen. You should see all of it, but I have to share my screen to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I think I've... Okay. And where is the sharing screen? Uh, share the screen. Mm, okay. Um, share. Oh, okay. Okay. Share. Uh, so I hope you can, can you see it better now, Mirko? Can you see my screen? Mirko? Yes, yes, I can, yes, I can see. I just you can see, and it's big and clear, yes? Yes, it is. Oh, great. So I hope everyone can see it, and I will use for this, uh, let's say, a moment, this slide from my computer, and I hope you can see it. So we start with the general location and with the description of uh, the voyevodship or province, and here I would like you to pay attention to prepositions and uh, articles. Prepositions, these are words like in, to, of, at, uh, on. They always create problems. Um, and articles are words like a and the. So if you look at the first expression that something is located in because in Polish we say na północy, right? Uh, but in English it is in. And because it is uh, Poland here at the end, okay, you don't have the. So you say in North Poland, Northern Poland, Southern Poland, Northwestern Poland, North Central Poland. So, but if you want to say that, for example, it is located in the north, in the south, in the um, west of Poland. So if you use the phrase in the west of, then you need the, okay? Uh, also, when we talk usually uh, about um, uh, the Baltic coast, we use on. We also use on when we talk about the rivers. So we say it is on the Vistula River. So um, it's a little bit strange to us. It sounds strange because it's on the river. So we imagine something completely different, but it's okay. And also I would like to comment on uh, the use of the in case of waters. Uh, in general, if you if you remember your let's say early days of learning English, uh, people told you that with geographical names we don't use the. It's not completely true because if your geographical name is in plural, we always put the in front before the name. Okay. Um, also, when your geographical name is any water, with one exception that I will uh, mention soon. So if it is the ocean, or the sea, the river, uh, the waterfall, uh, the bay, the gulf, um, 
you know, uh, the stream, the creek, so all kinds of waters, we put the before the word. So we say the Vistula River, the Thames, the, um, the Baltic Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific, right? Uh, the only exception to the rule are lakes. So if you have a lake, you don't put the before the name of the lake. But if you have uh, lakes in plural, for example, Wielki Jezioro Słone, then you put the because it is in plural. So you say the Great Salt Lakes, okay? So that's like some comment on the use of the with, um, with some geographical names. And then we have a sentence, it borders something to the west. In Polish, we would say graniczy z czymś na zachodzie. As you can see, it is a completely different thing in English. You say, for example, uh, Sopot borders the Baltic Sea to the, now let me think, to the east, right? I think, uh, not the Baltic Sea, but the, the uh, bay, because uh, Sopot, I think, borders the bay, not the Baltic Sea, actually. Then you can say the provincial capital is, you can say uh, what area, the population, and uh, most people, inhabitants, live in urban, miejskie, or rural areas. You can say something like it's one of the fastest or sometimes slowest growing regions in Poland, uh, or, for example, its excellent location at the intersection. Intersection, it's where the roads uh, cross each other of international transport routes. Fuels, it means it accelerates, uh, it makes it faster, cross-border exchange, for example, it is a gateway to the CEE markets and attracts foreign investments, for example, yes. So here you've got some sentences that you can simply use when you describe the general location of the property. Um, and then, you know, uh, maybe it's not a little bit fair. I know that we've got uh, people from uh, different parts of Poland here, but um, let's say I use the example um, of uh, Tri-City, but I put Tri in braces because uh, basically I think you can use uh, the sentences to describe any other city. So again, we've got it is situated instead of using located and located all the time on the Baltic coast or on the Bay of Gdansk at the mouth. Mouth, it's Ujście Rzeki. So at the mouth of some river or it's on the river or it is, for example, equidistant from one place and the other. So, for example, the place where I live we may think, uh, Kielno, it is uh, equidistant from Gdańsk and Gdynia, for example. Um, you can also say it's not only an economic, transportation, industrial and cultural center, but also a popular tourist destination. Uh, this expression here at the 20 census, this is w spisie powszechnym z roku 2000 something, the town had a population of, making it the largest, smallest town in the area, for example. And nice expression, uh, inhabited by, zamieszkały przez, or um, Tri-City is a vibrant metropolitan area consisting of, składające się z, and uh, here you've got um, like of uh, three cities, Gdańsk, Gdynia and Sopot, along with other cities and towns in their vicinity. Vicinity, it's neighborhood, sąsiedztwo, but not to use the word neighborhood all the time, we can use vicinity. Or you can use a very nice expression, 
It is home to a number of institutes of higher education. Uh, it's excellent opportunities for, um, and you say for what? Uh, or it is one of the most desired destinations to live and work in. You can say it is a busy provincial village or it is a busy um, district located approximately. Approximately it is uh, around eight kilometers. It's just an example, west of. So you say umiejscowiony w przybliżeniu 8 kilometrów na zachód od. If we want to uh, use that a grammatical structure. And just to practice prepositions and articles, you can now go to Quiz Prairie. Uh, I remind you it's 800-200 of uh, the access code. Lesson three, task one, where you can practice uh, prepositions and articles. And I think now I can uh, move maybe to the main room Hopefully it will work fine. Okay. Uh, Olo, uh, just could you please uh, copy the uh, address, Quizberry? Uh, Quizberry. Okay. www. I am putting it on chat. Okay. Yes. The access will be much more mm -hmm. easy. And, and the code. Just if you need it, I Just a general question. I hope it's going fine and not too many mistakes, but uh, you can practice it over and over again um, anytime you want. And hopefully every time it will be better. Oh. Okay, I think that uh, hopefully you finished it or not. Okay, I think that uh, you are slowly finishing it, probably. And um, while you are finishing it, I hope I am not disturbing you too much. 
Um, you can see that I moved to the second, uh, to, to the next slide, uh, where I put some useful expressions, uh, which, and these expressions are translated here into Polish. So you may use it as some kind of uh, dictionary uh, or um, some, let's say, sentences uh, that you can use for different, let's say, uh, provinces in uh, Poland. And um, I just uh, continue with some useful expressions on the next uh, page. And uh, I think a nice expression is, for example, a bedroom suburb or dormitory suburb. So it's like sypialnia. Uh, I think we use this expression in Polish when we talk about some districts uh, where people mostly uh, only live, there is no industry, and it is some uh, dormitory suburb or a bedroom suburb. And um, now I think I would like you to do a listening comprehension. This listening comprehension will be about... Uh, the Pomeranian uh, province district. Uh, so sorry for that. Again, I, I that I I did not choose uh, a different uh, province, but I chose let's say my uh, local one. Uh, the link to this I uh, is like this. I am just uh, typing and entering it here. You can see it. Can you see it? It is on chat. So you can copy it. And as usual, I think a good idea, just like before, is to open two uh, tabs. Uh, so to have like listening, uh, you've got uh, on one and the exercises on the other one. So, so you can see uh, this time it's not uh, typing in words, it's listening and answering some questions about the text. It is linear, so the questions follow the text, so you don't have to, you know, like jump, uh, but you can, of course, because you will listen it to it on your own, you can always stop, rewind, and when you download it, it looks like this, and you have to click this arrow because this is the, the, the website like this. Yes, Pomorskie, invest in Pomerania. And the text is here. Uh, it's around three minutes. So I think that if we, uh, let's say, use six minutes or five minutes to do it, maybe six, because sometimes you have to listen to this twice, right? So I hope now everybody can start uh, doing uh, this task. So let's get to work.
Uh, have you finished? Not yet. Okay, so a few seconds more. Um, I will just say about the word peer, uh, because um, I think in in the name of Molo, everybody says Molo. It's it's like a proper name, but the English word for uh, this kind of uh, structure it is a peer. I I think in Polish we also have a similar word peers or something like this uh, um, but if you go uh, to England if you go to Brighton uh, or, or or Bournemouth you will see a lot of peers going into the sea so so that's the name uh, well um, Okay, I see that uh, some people have finished. Some people, you know, don't worry if if it's not perfect. Uh, it's you. The good news is that you you have the link, you have the exercise, you can do it over and over again. And the more you listen, the better for you. Simply, so it's it's that thing. And then uh, I hope it's big enough. If not, I will share the screen. But I think it's big enough. We come here to specific location and neighborhood. So first about the addresses, uh, the property the property is located. And in Polish, we first say the street name and then it's uh, the number, right? In English, it's the other way around. They first put the number. So you live at, let's say, uh, number 10. Uh, I don't know, Vrosova uh, Street, yes? Um, and then um, I gave you sentences that you can use as some kind of templates. Uh, and actually, um, if you have to write something in English, I first recommend, let's say, copying. Changing only things that you must change, but using, you know, some sentences as some kind of a template and um, learning them by heart or just copying them and using them in this uh, way. Um, you can use the nice expression, it is conveniently located close to both, for example, Droga Kaszubska and S6 with Gdańsk, just a 35 minute drive, right? Um, or you can say that the property is located within the special economic zone, because sometimes it may be important, right? And you've got the translation in uh, braces or it stands within and around protected areas, protected areas, obszary prawnie chronione, e.g. a conservation area, obszar objęty ochroną konserwatorską. Sometimes it's quite important. And then two important uh, expressions, external obsolescence and functional obsolescence. Uh, external obsolescence, it is a form of depreciation so that it's got like, uh, it is something negative, yes, the negative impact caused by factors not 
on the property itself. That's why it's external. So, for example, it is environmental, social, or economical forces. Uh, so, for example, if the property is located nearby a garbage dump, that's not a nice location. The house can be beautiful, but uh, it's not a nice location in general. So the homeowner cannot reserve this loss in value by spending money to fix something in the property because the only way is simply to uh, just get rid of the garbage dump, which probably is not possible. So this is external obsolescence, yes? And then you've got the functional obsolescence. This is something that we can control as the owners because it describes a property that has decreased in desirability or functionality due to, for example, an outdated design feature. So, you know, it looks a little bit oldish, not so nice physical deterioration. So deterioration, it means that, I don't know, the windows are not too new, the doors don't look too nice, um, or, you know, uh, the roof is not perfect, but the owner or the potential new owners, they can fix it. So this is a functional obsolescence. And uh, conservation areas, it is the term used in the United Kingdom are areas of special architecture or historic interest and the character of which it is desirable to preserve or enhance. Enhance it is just to support and make it better. And quite often within the conservation areas, we have buildings which are listed. So we have listed buildings. Uh, listed buildings uh, are the buildings which you can, because they are on a special list, the list of uh, the curator. So they have to be taken care of. So uh, um, these are buildings which are considered to be of special architectural or historic interest. And uh, I think in Polish we say obiekty zabytkowe or something like this or na liście uh, uh, konserwatorskiej, but in English these buildings are listed, listed buildings. And now just to see if you have followed my explanations, you've got another individual task, which is uh, lesson three, task three. These are the definitions that I've just uh, mentioned, okay? So it's not a long exercise, I think just six sentences, but just to make you, let's say, digest the information.
okay? Uh, because I think it was really short um, and hopefully uh, you've got, uh, I think there were six questions, so six out of six, hopefully. Uh, um, and I hope that you will remember the words. And uh, let's go to the next slide where I would like to talk about um, amenities. Um, and again, sometimes people feel a little bit confused because if you look up dictionaries, and but it is the general meaning. Uh, if you look up dictionaries, you see that amenities are services or goods in a town, hotel, or other place that help uh, to make life pleasant. Yes, and uh, facilities, we remember from the first uh, lesson, facilities are places, buildings, and look, amenities, or pieces of equipment provided for a particular purpose and which are useful. And so you see amenities, facilities, and you get confused. But if you go to real property language, you will see that a facility, it is budynek object, right, as we remember, and amenity, it is a desirable feature in a home, residential community, commercial property that enhance uh, the appeal of that property to potential inhabitants or tenants. So we talk in case of uh, properties about amenities, okay? And in a second, we will uh, focus on different types of amenities. But before we do this, I would like to uh, explain the expression a property listing. A property listing is not in the valuation report. It is, you can, you can say, as it is explained here, it is an advertisement for a real estate property that is for sale. Uh, so it is some kind of advertisement, but they do not say property advertisement, it's property listing. And many times I think people just check, for example, what price is given in a property listing, right? And here I've got the original property listing for some property. Uh, you will notice that this is from the American uh, real estate agency, uh, property broker in English. Um, first of all, it's because of spelling and then because of some expressions. So, and you will see that, of course, because it is an advertisement, so the language is a little bit too enthusiastic, I would say, but you will see that basically, if you remove some, you know, enthusiastic expressions, you could use it as a very nice description of the residential property. And so the, it goes like this, uh, a rewarding escape peacefully situated. The language is really uh, uh, too bombastic, I would say, but luxurious, and upgraded this four bedroom, four and a half bathroom home of so many uh, square feet rests on a lot and uh, the, the size of the lot is given on a peaceful cul de sac. Cul de sac, uh, and here I will comment that if you ever come uh, across the names of the streets in England or in the United States or anywhere, you will be surprised how limited our Polish is because we have ulica, sometimes droga, uh, skwer, uh, aleja, and maybe sometimes boulevard. Boulevard, I, 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 I don't know, but I think it's that. In English, cul de sac, uh, it's either a dead end rose, uh, road or close, another word. It is the road that has just uh, like, you just drive in and it's not drive through. In Polish, it is uh, um, droga, what do we say when when you just drive in 
sięgacz. Ślepa ulica, yes, we say ślepa ulica uh, in Polish. Uh, doesn't sound nice. I think dead end road doesn't sound nice too. So uh, they say cul de sac because it sounds nicer or close because it's closed, right? Uh, in the lakeside neighborhood, richly appointed spaces include large gathering areas, a bride, professional grade kitchen. Professional grade, it simply means that the kitchen is not, uh, let's say, uh, common. It was designed by some architect who professionally deals some with interior designing. So it's professionally grade kitchen, uh, spectacular dining room, two walk out master suits and a home theater. Contemporary amenities include, and I think here I, 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 I put it in bold because I think nowadays if you describe properties, you also have these amenities. So you've got a solar photovoltaic, yes, or Tesla electric vehicle charging station. So that's also, I think, a useful expression. The expansive backyard includes a sparkling pool and a spa, plus a comfortable pool house, all in private, verdant, it means like green, but green in the sense that you've got bushes and plants, surroundings. You will appreciate the short drive to downtown Los Altos Rancho Shopping Center, access to Interstate 280, and numerous parks and preserves. I, I translated it into Polish, liczne parki i rezerwaty przyrody. So if you just uh, remove all these, uh, you know, uh, um, words which are really uh, not good for the valuation report, it's quite a nice description, right? Um, now, Let's go to amenities because it's, of course, not only solar, photovoltaic or electric vehicle charging station. We may divide amenities into local or public. So, for example, schools, playgrounds, supermarkets, sports centers, green spaces like parks, public transport, restaurants, health services, clinics and so on. So these are local public, yes, or community amenities, because sometimes you've got uh, condominiums. So uh, um, the, the property is shared by the residents, yes. And uh, as they say here, condominium complex, uh, AKA, AKA means also known as, so you don't have to say condominium complex, which is quite a long expression, but you can simply say condo or HOA. HOA, it's wspólnota mieszkaniowa, because sometimes we always uh, look for this expression in English. Uh, the full name is uh, Homeowner Association, uh, but the abbreviation is HOA. And then if these are community amenities, these can be swimming pools, tennis courts, some fitness facilities, parking, covered parking, uh, pet areas, so for animals, bike storage, security, uh, electric car charging stations, picnic areas, children's play areas, lifts, yes, because these all can be uh, quite nice amenities are uh, contributing to the value of the property. And then we come to another uh, uh, quite complex expression in Polish, uzbrojenie terenu. And uh, sometimes people fight how to translate it. The, the most common translation is simply utilities. You can talk about site utilities, so the utilities that you can find uh, at the place where the building is located or instead of utilities, you can also talk about 
services because services would be like media yes but um you can find uh, in different evaluation reports either utilities or services and they generally include electricity gas water and sewage and quite often you will find foul drainage uh and the foul drainage it is in your house okay so it is the the system of pipes that in the property takes the dirty water out of your property so that's foul drainage and it takes it to foul sewer it means this is something that belongs to the municipality or some company that owns the system and it transports it to the uh, sewage plant where the water is uh, purified or uh, treated simply okay so we have water and sewage which is voda ishteki right foul drainage i would say it is uh uh the system of pipes at your home taking the dirty water away and then foul sewer so the system in the streets in the uh area and of course communications services communication services it's like the internet uh telephone lines uh um, different kinds of, you know, the way how people can communicate, okay? And then, of course, we have utility providers, um, and they are responsible for the infrastructure that supplies the utilities. And here I put some hopefully nice expressions. The property is connected to the mains, it means nieruchomość jest podłączona do sieci. Uh, here I put, for example, elektrycznej, but it doesn't have to be. The mains, it is sieć. And sometimes you have to explain exactly what uh, thing you are talking about, yes? Uh, gas is connected and the meter, licznik, is located in, or the meter, and now, you know, it's like this. If you normally talk about uh, skrzynka, uh, I think most people say skrzynka z bezpiecznikami. So this is a fuse box in English. That's how people normally talk when they talk about it. But if you want to use the professional language, you use a consumer unit. Uh, so this is Tablica rozdzielcza. But I don't know how many people in Poland say tablica rozdzielcza. Most people simply say uh, skrzynka z bezpiecznikami, probably. But uh, the official name is a con consumer unit, also in Polish tablica rozdzielcza. Okay, we continue. And then road access. The truth is, if you cannot get to your land, you can't use it. It's just that simple. And then, of course, you've got different types of access. So you can get to your property uh, using the road, water or air. Of course, we will focus on the road because I don't think there are too many properties that you can get uh, only using uh, the water or air transport. But who knows? And then you've got, let's say, from the point of view who can use the road, we have public roads. So, you know, everybody can use them. Uh, uh, so uh, you have access to a public road, which means that it is a road maintained by the local provincial state authorities. And sometimes you need a deeded access deed or a notarial deed act notarialny it means that you have to sign some deed to cross another property to get to yours okay so don't be surprised if you hear something like a deeded access because it simply means that probably you have uh, some servitude right or easement of the road 
And uh, as it is written here, most of these types of properties have deeded access in perpetuity. You remember the expression? Or easement that provides access to an existing road or street. And then many times when you describe the access, you talk about the roads when you think about its surface. So the, the, there may be paved roads, utwardzone, or unpaved, and then you see how many different types you have here and there. And then you can even have improved unpaved roads, for example, gravel roads. So as you can see, uh, quite a lot of vocabulary. And sometimes uh, when you describe, uh, you will have the great, I think, a place to look up the words that you need. But to be able to use it, I think it's always good to practice. So now I think it's vocabulary lesson three, task four. Um, and I hope you, you will be uh, able to do it in two or three minutes because it's just checking uh, some words. And how is it going? Difficult or not? Hopefully not.
Okay. I see that some people have finished. Uh, some people are probably still a little bit fighting. Uh, but hopefully uh, we can continue. Oh, somebody is writing something. We will see. Well, I, I think, you know, uh, that if someone for the first time gets the result like 10 out of 14, it's perfect. Uh, um, really great. So, so that's, that's wonderful. And then, you know, uh, finally, we have arrived at our property, yes, because it's like going from uh, the province lower, lower, lower. Finally, we are finally at our property and we have different types of houses. Uh, this is like a long list of words, but I just underlined some that I think are quite interesting. So the first one, which I underlined, it's an end of terrace house. Because uh, a terrace house or a terraced house, it is szeregowiec. And then sometimes we think, uh, what is, you know, because you've got, okay, the ones in the middle, they are typical, but the ones which are at the ends, uh, they are usually more valuable because they have like a, a little bit bigger uh, a piece of land, right? Well, so this is called an end of terrace house, okay? Um, then dvory i obiekty zabytkowe, uh, mansions and conservation properties, uh, or something that especially in Gdańsk or many old towns in Poland, a tenement, kamienica czynszowa, or I think houses which are more and more popular nowadays, a manufactured uh, home, yes? So dom prefabrykowany, or a bed sitter, which is kawalerka. Um, and I think quite a useful word, especially when we talk about houses, it's an outbuilding, zabudowanie, because sometimes we also uh, look for a word like zabudowanie. This is the word. And then I would like to talk about the word room, because again, it is one of the first words that we learn uh, when we uh, begin our adventure with English. Pokój. But in fact, it's not only pokój, it's also pomieszczenie. So as you can see, the definition of a room is it is an enclosed space within a building that it's not used solely as a circulation space. I also like the expression a circulation space uh, because this is ciąg uh, komunikacyjny, because again, uh, if you see something like this in Polish and you have to use it, and ciąg komunikacyjny, you desperately think what it is, and it is a circulation space. Circulation, because maybe, you know, people can circulate. Uh, so a circulation space or circulation spaces, um, this is an area or areas within a building that are used for pedestrian travel. That is a passage of way. So corridors, hallways, stairways, lobbies, landings, etc. And then also, apart from all the rooms that you have listed below, I think you have two important expressions, ancillary area, uh, areas, uh, or area, depending if you have one or many, pomieszczenia, pomieszczenie, przynależne. So, for example, a garage, porch, gdanek, ganek, conservatory, ogród zimowy, uh, patio, okay? Or in-unit amenity spaces and much easier accessory areas, pomieszczenia, pomocnicze. Right, because you have them too when sometimes you describe uh, the property. And then I gave you the list of, I think, all possible rooms in uh, the houses. 
Uh, it's a long list and probably it could be extended, but you should treat it simply as some kind of dictionary. Yes, um, and, and that's it, I would say. So um, just use them uh, as, as uh, the, the uh, list. But I also tried to show you, like, uh, I think it's in bold, for example, open plan kitchen diner. If you see something like this, you may not know how to translate it, but in Polish it is otwarta kuchnia połączona z jadalnią. You can, of course, have otwarta kuchnia połączona z uh, pokojem uh, dziennym, salonem. So it's open plan kitchen sitting room or living room. So this open plan means that it's otwarta, okay? And sometimes, and I think it's quite popular nowadays, and sometimes we want to, uh, to use it. Or another uh, expression here, utility. Utility, you remember um, all the, you know, gas, electricity, and so on. So utility or mechanical or technical rooms, pomieszczenia techniczne. You can have, for example, a boiler rooms, heating rooms, and so on, yes? Uh, also, uh, because um, nowadays garderoba is quite popular, uh, but in English you've got the word uh, closet, but closet it's just a kind of wardrobe that you open. It's not a room, but if you put walk in in front of it, then you have the room into which you can walk and use it. So walk in closet, it's garderoba. And uh, now using uh, the, the list, using the dictionary, you can continue and you can do uh, lesson three, task five, uh, houses and rooms, just to practice and learn at the same time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, this this cannot be too difficult then. So so that's that's good, and we can uh, continue, and we come to the condition uh, of houses and buildings. So um, you know, some people say that a pink house can be considered 
excellent to some and poor to others. Of course, the condition of houses, it relates to the age, design, quality of construction and materials and the levels of maintenance. So what is the condition of the house, right? And here I would like to comment a little bit on, uh, let's say, a grammatical issue. Uh, because, uh, as you can see here, I put the three-bedroom house. And although it's three, I didn't use bedrooms. It's a three-bedroom house. Why? You can say the same thing in the other way, and then you will use the plural form. So you will say the house that has three bedrooms and then I say three bedrooms but why do I say a uh, or the three bedroom house uh, it's because that if you put this expression before the noun the noun it is a house yes it is an adjective przymiotnik and in English, we do not make adjectives plural, yes? So you have one form. You have like a beautiful girl, beautiful girls. It's always one form. So because it is an adjective here, okay? So because it is an adjective, you cannot use the plural form here. So if you want to say that, for example, uh, this girl is 15 years old, it's okay, ta dziewczynka ma 15 lat, but 15-letnia dziewczynka is, it is a 15 dash year, not years, year dash old girl okay so if we use them as adjectives we must use the singular form and just to see if my explanation was clear you've got the exercise to practice uh, this uh, grammatical structure and uh, please use dashes uh, when you write dashes it is this little or hyphen Yes, uh, when you write the adjectives, okay? Uh, hopefully it's clear, I hope, I don't know, but I hope that I've explained it in some more or less clear way.
Okay, so is it very difficult? I, I hope that, of course, you all once upon a time had it at school and it's just some kind of refreshment. Uh, but but uh, I hope it's, you are just uh, doing fine. And if you are doing it, I hope I am not disturbing you uh, talking. I hope. <laughs> yes, if you remember to put uh, the, the hyphen, it is simple. If you don't, uh, then it says, oh, great. So uh, grammatically speaking, if we can say that, you are doing fine. So I am really happy and I hope that you will remember to use it uh, in practice and uh just one thing because it's written here the three bedroom house i i remember i was just a little girl and i i met my uh mom's friends who were british and they asked me how big our house was and i answered the question that it's got uh three rooms so it's a three room house and they said oh my god so it's so big and i thought well it's not big it's got just three rooms what are they talking about and then you know uh it took me some time to understand that when uh british people say that uh it's a three room house they mean that there are three bedrooms and all the other rooms like a kitchen a dining room a living room a loo and everything this is taken for granted that it is there. In my house, there were actually three rooms and nothing more. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds as if I lived in a mansion, but, but it's just like, you know, uh, a completely different way of thinking. Okay, so uh, let's continue. And we come to... You know, like you have to describe, I know it's a little bit boring, but you have to describe house exterior parts. Yes, so the house from outside. And here you have like, again, a lot of words uh, that if you wanted to find them in the dictionaries, it would take them, it would take you a lot of time. Because even if you look here, orynowanie stworzywa sztucznego wydaje się być w dobrym stanie, you know, uh, it can take ages and it's just the plastic rainwater fittings, rainwater fittings, or obróbka dachu, again, some beautiful Polish expressions, roof flashing. If you have obrubka komina, then komin it's chimney, so it's a uh, chimney flashing. So obrubka for some reasons, I, I think the word obrubka in Polish is also interesting, uh, uh, it is obrubka flashing. And uh, you can also talk about condensation and insulation. Be very careful when you use the word isolatia, because in English you've got two words, isolation, as you remember, and insulation. Isolation means that someone is isolated, so is alone, separated, and insulation, it is our Polish like thermic insulation, okay? Um, it can be a single, two, three-story building, as you can see, no plural, uh, with wooden cladding, brick, stucco exterior sliding. So all these, you know, are uh, types of things that you put outside. You can have dormers in Polish Lukarna. You have different types of the roofs here you've got different types of the tile roofs that you can put on 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 the roof or you can have different types of roofing so you can have roof panels thatched roofs ecological green roofs lots of possibilities right um and then you've got a bay window 
which is uh, Vekush. You can have different, you know, uh, materials from which windows are made. You can describe windows in different ways. But the very interesting thing uh, is double or triple glazing. And I I, you know, like in Poland, I think double glazing is a standard. And I think even I would say nowadays triple glazing is. In England, it's still, I would say, uh, single glazing is quite typical, especially in the older houses. So glazing, szyby, szybowanie, right? And you talk about double, triple or single um i put here like all i think expressions that you might find useful uh for example a lightning protection system installacja od gromowa uh, which also sometimes may be worth mentioning in the description um and then we come to house interior parts. And I think the very interesting word is stolarka. Of course, it can be wewnętrzna and zewnętrzna, right? But you can call it interior Finnish carpentry or joinery. Yes, because sometimes we look for this word stolarka. So this is it. And here I put again, uh, words which you can find useful when you describe the joinery. You can also here find interior design, decoration, yes, uh, so to, to describe the, the flat or the house. Um, you know, like, uh, for example, wysokie sufity, sometimes we wonder, is it the same as in Polish? Yes, it is high ceilings or this an open plan flat. So it's the flat with open rooms. Yes, uh, built in uh, elements. I think cabinetry is a very useful word because in Polish we have two magic words, szafa, szafki. In English, it's not that easy. Usually you have to think about, you know, um, what it is used for. But cabinetry is quite safe. Um, exposed beams, the exponowane belki, moldings, listwy, window frames, uh, ramy okienne, right? So I hope that you will find uh, the... the um, uh, these all uh, expressions useful. And also here it's the continuation of, let's say, useful expressions, but I would like to draw your attention to three words which are in bold here. It's refurbished, renovated and redecorated. Because in Polish, again, we have one great word, odnowić. And in English, you've got three words. So when you refurbish something, it means that uh, you think of many works like painting, decorating, upgrading, major re repair work, alternations, conversions, extensions, and modernizations. So really, it's it's like a big, big thing when you, you have to demolish the walls, build something new and so on. This means ref to refurbish. When you renovate, it means that you want to restore something to the original state. It means that probably if you think about a tenement house or some conservation uh, building, you will have to renovate it. It means to restore it to its original state. And redecorate basically means something small. Redecorate, it means that you just paint the walls, uh, maybe change the rugs, and that's it. So remember uh, that the difference between three words, which all in Polish mean, I think, odnowić. Um, and here, I would like you to have a look. I will, 
upload uh, the other presentation. It is part of the, uh, how can I upload another presentation? I cannot upload, Mirko. Maybe I have to close this one. Uh, yes, it's necessary to close and, this one. And, yes, and, and again yes, upload. Yes, mm -hmm. and, then, and this is I, 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 you know, I removed the address, but I just wanted to show you the way the value, the property is described in England, and you will be surprised. Uh, I think, like here on the left, you've got the key issues, and here is the description. So okay, type and age, uh, construction, you know, even the, the thickness of the walls is given. Accommodation, okay, we also give that. Then garage and grounds, so there are or there are no parking and so on, uh, front garden. So this is like the general thing. Then you go a little bit deeper, location. Okay, residential area, I think still it is more or less the same, but circumstances of inspection, inspection, this is this on-site inspection, when people, uh, you know, when you go to see the property, yes, so they say at the time of our inspection, it was overcast, so it was cloudy, but dry. And this was preceded by a period of cold weather and snow. And then limits to inspection. Yes, I will send this in a description. Yes, because I think we will not go through it in detail because it's impossible. I will just uh, draw your attention to the differences. But yes, it will be uh, sent. And I think Ola, the other Ola, will put it on the website. Yes. Um, then look, even movement, it is that the is the house moving. So can you see cracks uh, and things like that? And they discuss timber defects, dampness, you know, just like all the details. I don't know. They must be really going into details uh, or dampness. And it's very interesting that you have from time to time the part action. So what must be done? Yes, um, which I think uh, is also interesting. Look, condensation and insulation, how much it is, uh, you know, uh, and if you go at home into detail, you will see how detailed the description is. Uh, the exterior, roof, structure, and covering. So uh, um, it's, it's really amazing when you look at it. Or chimneys, even the chimneys are uh, discussed. Oh, and look, here we've got chimney flashings, uh, obrubka kominów. Uh, so, so, you know, um, you can find some words uh, from your uh, dictionary here. Um, or rainwater fittings, yes? Uh, so, orynnowanie, main walls, the description of, of the walls and so on. Uh, external joinery and decoration, yes? Uh, and then uh, the interior, and they even discuss the roof space. The roof space, it is the place where you've got the attic. So I, I guess the, that the property value work got into every corner of the property to see everything. Ceilings, floors, internal walls and partitions. You remember partitions from the last lesson, hopefully. Um, fireplaces, um, internal joinery and decoration described. So look, it's it's just like I, I wouldn't say uh, that the book written on it, but really a lot. And then you've got the services here. The the person used the the the, the word the services, not utilities. 
and uh, discusses electricity and some others. So, of course, you will get it uh, um, probably tomorrow. It will be uh, put on the, the uh, website. It will be posted there. And I think it's time to stop. But uh, we will continue this part. And um, I, I would like to say thank you to the people. It is a little bit longer because we started a little bit longer. Sorry for that. Sorry for the inconvenience and the, 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 the misunderstanding simply, but uh, hopefully next time it will be okay. Uh, yes, it was my mistake. So every time we should meet at uh, half past uh... Uh, six? Six. six yes exactly <laughs> half past six don't worry we will finish it next time and we will continue with the description of the industrial property it will be the warehouse okay great thank you so much Olu. thank you and thank, thank you, you for you. your attention thank you thank Bye. you so take care and have a nice evening have a nice evening bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.